So today I want to talk about scatter plots. And these you may or may not have seen before, but it's just a different type of graph. It's another way that we can represent data. And these particular graphs I got from the internet. And this one right here is one that you probably um, have seen or definitely had discussions about. Because as the time that you spend studying increases. So notice that my X value is increasing. I was to plot this in quadrant one of a coordinate grid. So as the X increases, my Y values increase. So that would be my test scores. And that makes sense. The more time you study, the better test scores you would have. And then this one I thought was interesting was because somebody took the time to look at the length of your movie titles and to see if there was a correlation is there a relationship between the amount of money that it made so again you can make these scatter plots for any data that you would like so let's take a look at the actual definition of it so it's just a graph of a collection of ordered pairs so remember our ordered pairs are your xy values so here I have an XY table, and we'll go ahead and just plot these and see if we can see some type of relationship. And let's say, so 0, 2, and at 3, I have 5. When I get these images offline, they want to make sure that they are linking to the appropriate resource for copyright purposes, so that's okay. We'll just not worry about that right clicking showing the actual address so here we go and then six seven because it's always important to make sure you know where you're getting your information from so six seven be about right here and i did that earlier so three five let's see if i can plot that again and not change zero two so zero two three five X is 6, Y is 7, X is 9, Y is 8, and X is 12. I'll just go ahead and estimate it out here. Y is 10. So it's not like the lines that we graphed earlier where we had our, made our XY tables and we saw a steady increase. These may or may not have some type of relationship. So you notice it doesn't make a straight line. So we talk about these particular graphs when we interpret their relationships. So they may or may not have what we call a correlation between the two variables. And again, make up whatever you want it to be, the number of cupcakes that you had um, per month. Hopefully you're not having it um, every day. Those are sometimes food. And so you just want to look to see if there's some type of relationship, some type of correlation. And the main one that we're going to be looking for is a positive correlation, a negative correlation, and then no correlation. So here we go. Our positive correlation. The Y coordinates tend to increase as the X coordinates increase. So both are going up. So as the time spent studying increases, your grades would increase. So that's a positive correlation. And you can see that both are going up positive. And a negative correlation, the Y coordinates tend to decrease as the X coordinates in increase. And so I like this graph that I found because it's something that hopefully makes sense to you. If you're trying to run 100 meters, if you spent a little bit amount of time it would take you longer to run that 100 meters. But if you spend a lot of time studying, so as your time spent increased, the amount that you would have, or sorry, the time it would take you to run that 100 meters would be a lot less because you train more. And that makes sense. As you train, you get stronger and you get faster. So again, the coordinates could have a positive where your graph tends to go up, and it has a negative, or it could have a negative correlation, not necessarily being negative in the bad way, just negative as it's decreasing. 
And then the last one is it could have no correlation at all. So if I was just to plot, if your data end up plotting random coordinates like this, we would say that there's no correlation. We can't really say for sure that there's a positive or a negative, so we would just say there's no correlation. So here are some examples. We'll have a discussion about these in class, and you can just take some time, look through these, and see if you can decide if it's going to be positive, negative, or no correlation. And again, we'll talk about these in class. Okay, and then the last thing I want to remind you of is line graph. And that is when we graph data over time. And so that's the most important thing you want to remember. Whenever you see data that is going to have some type of change over time, the main graph you're going to use is a line graph. And remember, it's not going to be those straight lines that we found the slope and the x and y intercepts with. This is going to be something that goes up, down. It's not necessarily going to be at a constant rate. So if I'm looking at the monthly rainfall for this example, we have in April, six inches. In May, we had three inches. In June, it was four. And then July, it was one. It could go up in August. Really depends on where it is. And then I found this graph because a lot of times the profit is definitely graphed in data. Companies want to know that over time their, they, their profits increase. Or because if it was decreasing, they might want to change their strategy or change their product line depending on what their profits are. And then they make adjustments off of, um, you know, management and their company and forecast and all that stuff. So we use graphs to represent data and to make educated decisions in order to, you know, hopefully make things better. So again, we'll be making examples of these in class and um, I will talk with you later. Bye.